today I'm going to be talking to you all about ASMR. So to start, what is ASMR? Some of you may have heard of it before and some of you may have not. ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response and it's described as a warm, pleasant, and tingly feeling in your brain and throughout your body whenever you watch ASMR. So that warm and tingly feeling that you get whenever you watch ASMR is referred to as brain tingle tingles and the tingles produce a feeling of calm and relaxation throughout your body and the first place people normally go to for ASMR is YouTube and viewers use ASMR videos to promote relaxation and sleep and some viewers will go as far to say that ASMR relieves their anxiety and depression and pain from chronic illnesses and ASMR has for the most part gone unnoticed by science until the last few years um, and it's grown increasingly popular in social media and it's gotten some unwanted attention from a lot of critics. So here's some examples of some popular ASMR artists, that's what they're called, and these are the ones that have like the most subscribers on YouTube, and we're going to watch one of them today, just as an example for those of you who don't know what ASMR is. Thank you. 
video kind of showed what ASMR is. It's a very like personal thing. It feels, it's like very like role play-ish. It feels like that person's actually talking to you and when you're wearing headphones it sounds a lot different than you watching it now. It makes your ears feel all tingly whenever they make all those noises. And then when you're watching it in a screen in front of your face it kind of, it's more like personal I guess. So how does ASMR Wait, sorry, I skipped ahead. So, these people have used the warm, tingly feeling of ASMR and created a career out of it. These people have millions of subscribers. They make a lot of money helping people with ASMR. And these people are referred to as ASMR artists. They're mostly girls, but there are some boys out there. And most of them post on YouTube. Some of them are so successful that they have Spotify accounts that they post on too. And um, W Magazine also has a series where they have celebrities do ASMR and they answer interview questions. Um, they've had Cardi B, Nina Dobrev, Margot Robbie, and Paris Hilton, and just a lot of other people. You might have seen those on YouTube. So how does ASMR happen? So when a person watches or listens to ASMR, they feel a warm, tingly feeling when they're triggered. And in this case, triggered is a good thing. Tingles are the pleasurable feelings felt on the skin and scalp and your ears after being stimulated by a sound or sight that um, triggered you. And tr like, um, tingles are not the same as a chill. Chills are kind of like a cold like feeling. Tingles are warm and they just feel good, I guess. I don't know how to explain it other than if you've experienced it. So a trigger is the sound or sight that gives you the tingle. And triggers are unique to each person, but there's a lot of common ones like tapping, scratching, whispers, water sounds, eating sounds, and visual triggers, which you saw in that video that I just showed you. So let's go to the beginning of ASMR. <clears throat> so the term for ASMR is pretty new. However, people have been experiencing the tingles for a very long time. Um, October 2000, 29, 2007 can be seen as the birthplace of ASMR. So on this day, an individual by the name of OK Whatever um, started a forum on the website called SteadyHealth.com called Weird Sensation That Feels Good. And it attracted over 300 replies and people were having a lot of conversations on this forum about that sensation. And some of the participants in that thread like a woman named Jennifer Allen, developed resources that aided in the growth of ASMR. She actually created the term ASMR in 2010 when she started a Facebook group, and she also created ASMRresearch.org. Since this um, forum in 2007, ASMR has become incredibly popular on social media. And overall, that forum led directly to the following ASMR milestones. The first global cataloging of ASMR sensations and triggers, the first ASMR discussion groups, the first ASMR blog, the first ASMR video posted, and the first ASMR entry on Wikipedia, which Jennifer Allen, she talked to people at Wikipedia and she convinced them that ASMR was important enough to have its own page on Wikipedia. So we just talked about Jennifer Allen. She's seen as the creator of ASMR. So there's some
some popular people in the ASMR community, like Dr. Craig Richard. He's a professor, and a professor at the Shenandoah University, and he has a PhD in psychology, biology, among a lot of other science degrees. And his newest area of research is ASMR. He wrote a book called Brain Tickle Tingles that is all about ASMR. And he has a podcast dedicated to sharing his ASMR research, which I did listen to a few of them, and I got a lot of information from there. And he also founded the ASMR University website. And so some of these ASMR people we looked at a few minutes ago on the previous slide. And Bob Ross, he's also seen as kind of like an ASMR artist, like one of the first ones, because people just say that they're really relaxed whenever they watch him, so he is considered an ASMR artist. So let's talk about some of the science behind ASMR. So although ASMR is very new to science, a lot is known about its effects on the body and brain. So it includes, whenever someone watches ASMR and they have their tingles, um, that includes the same molecules involved whenever a baby is comforted by its mother. So the brain, when it's triggered, um, it releases endorphins, oxytocin, which is the love hormone, serotonin, which is the happiness hormone, GABA, which is the relaxation stimulator, and melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. So it's easy to see how, whenever you watch ASMR, why you get that relaxing, comforting feeling. It also often puts people to sleep when they watch it. So in a quote, Dr. Craig Richard, which I talked about in a minute ago, explains how ASMR affects us biologically. He says, the ASMRists are sending a signal to viewers that they are safe and cared for in a non-threatening way. When a child scrapes his knee, it's hugging. It's lowering your voice. It's focused personal attention. Our brains are hardwired wired for, for pattern recognition of those stimuli, stimuli. So whenever people watch ASMR, it kind of boils down to your biology. And whenever they watch it, they just feel comforted and cared for, and it just makes them feel relaxed. So let's talk about ASMR and health. So ASMR is scientifically proven to have the potential to reduce anxiety, depression, insomnia, and many chronic illnesses, well the pain from chronic illnesses. For example, watching ASMR improves anxiety symptoms by reducing the heart rate and promoting relaxation by releasing all those hormones and its effects are comparable to medications used to treat anxiety and depression. So while I was doing my research, I found a lot of studies about ASMR and it, how it affects the body and mind, but um, they were all very similar and they all had very similar results, so I just picked the one that I thought was the best to talk to you guys about today. So the study was done by Emma L. Barat, Nick J. Davis, and the Swansea University Department of Psychology Ethics Committee in 2015. So the samples of participants consisted of 245 men, 222 women, and eight people of non-binary gender. So there was a total of 475 participants in their test. And their ages ranged from 18 to 54 years. The individuals lived worldwide and they regularly watched ASMR. And the Beck Depression Inventory and the Beck Anxiety Inventory were included in the study to monitor and give insight about the changes in the participants' mood. And so the Beck Depression in Inventory and the Beck Anxiety Inventory is a multiple choice self-report used to measure the severity of anxiety and depression and this test is used worldwide by healthcare providers. You might have even taken it when you go to the doctors to just get a regular checkup and they give you that paper that asks you all those questions. So it's very similar to that. So study in action. The participants were asked if they suffered from any chronic illnesses before starting the test, and quite a few did. And they were asked how often they normally watch ASMR and they were asked if they experienced tingles from a list of nine triggers that they were given to watch. And those triggers were crisp sounds, whispering, personal attention, a vacuum noise, airplane noise, laughing, smiling, 
watching repetitive tasks and slow movement. So they included that vacuum noise and the airplane noise because those are pretty common noises that we hear on a daily basis and they wanted to see how the brain would react to those versus sounds that you might not hear as often. Um, they were asked where, like, on what part of their body that they experienced those tingles. And they scored their experience on the flow state scale. So the flow state scale is a scale that measures the flow of brain activity and how absorbed you are in, while you're doing a task. So if you're really absorbed by a certain task, your brain activity would just flow continuously and you'd be very absorbed in what you're doing. So the, res the, the results, they were very positive. So based on the questions asked, the study found that 98 participants watched ASMR for relax relaxation, 82% watched it for sleep, and 70% used it to deal with everyday stress. Many of the participants mentioned that they watched ASMR due to chronic illness where a medical intervention had been unable to improve, which is really interesting that even medication couldn't help them, but whenever they watched ASMR, they found relief. Um, so there was this one man who did the study, and he had kind of a testimony about ASMR. So he had really bad anxiety and insomnia, and the only way that he could find relief was by watching ASMR. So he would watch ASMR whenever he was having anxiety attacks and his medication could not help him, but whenever he watched ASMR, his anxiety attacks went away and he was able to control them with ASMR, which I thought was really interesting. So the most common triggers that produced these participants' tingles were whispering at 75%, personal attention at 69%, crisp sounds at 64%, slow movements at 53%, and repetitive tasks at 34%. So based on the research, 80% of the participants responded positively when asked if ASMR affected their mood, and the rest of the people were unsure. They were grouped based on their Beck Depression Index that they had taken. And the scores could range from 0 to 100, 0 being my mood was not affected at all, to 100 being my mood was greatly increased. 50% <clears throat> said their mood improved without even achieving tingles just by watching ASMR. 30% needed tingles to improve their mood. And 69% of those who scored moderate to severe on the Beck Depression Index reported using ASMR to improve their symptoms on a daily basis. Those who scored as depressed had a mean improvement of mood of 38.75 on the BDI, and those who were not depressed had an improvement of 21.33. So that's a pretty good improvement. So 38 of those people who said that they had chronic pain due to a chronic illness reported that ASMR actually eased their symptoms. And an analysis was carried out with those people who had responded positively. And they collected data for those people before watching ASMR, during watching ASMR, immediately after watching, and three hours after they had watched it. And the comparisons between all that data showed a significant difference between, in chronic pain between the time that they, before they watched ASMR and while they were watching ASMR. And then that improvement of their pain from watching ASMR maintained over a three-hour <coughs> over a three-hour um, time frame, and then it slowly decreased afterwards. So it, they had a lot of improvement from this study that showed that. <coughs> so let's talk about why ASMR is so popular and why people like it so much. ASMR is an easily accessible and free way for people to relax and fall asleep. And in today's society, that's very appealing since so many people have a lot of illnesses and depression and anxiety, and it's free, so it's a lot, it's more affordable than medications that people might have to pay for. And um, it's so popular that brands like IKEA and KFC have used ASMR in their commercials, and during the Super Bowl this year you might have seen that there are some commercials that had ASMR in it. 
and it's so appealing because people can find relief wherever they are, and if and they have it at their fingertips, so they can just go on their phone and look up ASMR and find relief. And they can find relief in the comfort of their own home, and they don't have to deal with the negative side effects that medication may have. Before we get into the controversy, I'm going to talk about two more really impressive testimonies about ASMR. So this one woman that I had found, she has a child with microcephaly, which is whenever you have a high-risk pregnancy and your child is born with a much smaller head than normal, so they have a lot of brain damage as a result of that. So her child has a lot of developmental delays, behavioral problems, autistic traits, poor coordination, learning disabilities, sleep problems, sensory processing issues, and she was not able to find any relief for him and it was really stressful for her. And one day she came across ASMR and she had an idea to have him watch it. And now he watches it regularly and it helps him sleep and relax and it, it actually encourages him to communicate. He normally wouldn't communicate with people but whenever he watches ASMR he actually tries to communicate with the people who do it and it's been a huge improvement in his behavior. And I also had found a woman with autism and she had said that ASMR had helped her greatly. Um, she said it helped calm her anxiety, help her sleep, and then it also helped her recover, recover from meltdowns that she has. Um, even when medications could not help her meltdowns, she watches ASMR and she's able to recover from her meltdowns quicker than she would with medication. So let's get into all the controversy that surrounds ASMR. There's actually quite a bit, and I was really surprised to find that there was so much. So as it has become more popular, it's gotten a lot of unwanted attention. So most people just think ASMR is kind of weird or inappropriate. And I mean, that's kind of easy to see since it's such like an intimate thing, I guess. And many scientists and doctors doubt the physical and psychological effects that it has since it hasn't really been studied that much and it's not recognized as like a medical thing that can help you. So um, the main concern for doctors is that people will use AS ASMR and watch it and abuse it. Um, they fear that people with anxiety and depression will try to use ASMR to mask their symptoms instead of getting medication to treat the root of their problems. And whenever people hear ASMR, they kind of assume that it's like a sexual thing, which it's really not. It's not intended to be. Um, most people just use it for the reasons that I had already explained. I mean, like any other genre of video, I'm sure you can find inappropriate ASMR out there. But most creators just do it for an income and to help people out, and they enjoy doing that. So there's also a concern about sex trafficking in the ASMR community, which I guess it has happened a couple of times. Um, so Congress has recently passed a bill to tackle online sex trafficking and many female um, ASM artists, only females, have had their accounts frozen by YouTube and PayPal and PayPal is where they get most of their income because people will pay them through PayPal and um, those have all been frozen because of people's concerns about sex trafficking and people believe that ASMR is an easy way for um, child predators and sex offenders to find new victims since ASMR is, like I said, pretty intimate and it generally is supposed to be like a safe community and people think that those people could try to take advantage of people in that community. Um, the Chinese government also banned ASMR, so all ASMR artists in China are not allowed to make any more videos and they have all been taken down because um, the ruling came from China's anti-pornography office and I guess they had a lot of videos disguised as, as ASMR um, and their, their um, main group of viewers, viewers are children and that was becoming a problem since people were putting inappropriate videos on YouTube underneath the name of ASMR so they had to take them all down to go through them all. So people also believe that ASMR replaces the need for um, like real face-to-face -face human intimacy since people can go online and feel like they're with a person and feel like they're cared for instead of just actually having an actual relationship with somebody and that's kind of concerning for some people. And um, 
Religious people tend to have a negative view of ASMR. Um, since in the Bible it says that like hypnosis is bad and everything, people think that ASMR is hypnosis, which it's really not. Um, I mean, they have some similar effects, but they're not the same at all. Like ASMR is not hypnotizing, and it's not meant to be that way. So that's why some religious people don't agree with ASMR and don't want to watch it. Um, some people also think that it's unethical to pay someone for ASMR since like you're kind of paying for your enjoyment and it's kind of like the entertainment in industry and paying somebody in that way. Um, so a lot of people don't like that part about it. And there's also a lot of children you might have seen in um, one of the pictures I showed. There's a girl, her name is Life with Mac and she's really popular on YouTube. But she's like 12 years old and she does ASMR. And there's a lot of concern for her because a lot of people watch her videos and, you know, that's an easy, it could be really easy for, you know, her to get into trouble with child predators and like that. So it's a big concern. People are really concerned for kids who do ASMR. Oh, and there's also a thing about ASMR called tingle immunity and people are kind of concerned about that because if you watch ASMR too often, you will become immune to the effects of ASMR. <clears throat> so like those people that I had shared about that had improvements from ASMR, some people like that find that after a while, ASMR no longer affects them in that way and then their problems start to come back. So then um, scientists are trying to find a way to um, help with that tingle immunity, I guess. And certain people on YouTube will make videos with certain triggers to kind of overcome the tingle immunity so people don't have to um, miss out, I guess, on their improvements. So um, I have a lot of new thoughts about ASMR since I had researched it. So I knew what it was and I had come across it and I watched a few videos and I was really interested by it because um, when I watched it, uh, it really relaxed me and made me really like sleepy. So I started watching it and it really had helped me sleep and I was just really intrigued by it. Um, I knew that people thought of it as a joke because I had seen a lot of memes online and on Instagram about it. Um, but I never knew how serious it was for some people and how helpful it was for people and their medical issues. And I didn't know how um, people had built careers and they make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars off of YouTube and Spotify just from doing ASMR. And I have a lot more respect now for it and for the people who do it. And um, like many others, I have found that ASMR helps me relax and fall asleep. And um, I've noticed that the nights that I do watch ASMR, I fall asleep faster and I sleep all through the night and then I wake up feeling refreshed, but the days that I don't, the nights that I don't watch it, I um, have a hard time falling asleep and I wake up multiple times throughout the night and I wake up and I'm still tired. So that was, it's pretty interesting for me to see how that has affected me. Um, I think that ASMR can greatly benefit society. I think that with more research, doctors in the future may be able to recommend ASMR like they would recommend like meditation. And um, I think ASMR is a great way to find relief without some possible medication side effects. And I hope that in the future ASMR can become more scientifically advanced to kind of specifically target and treat medical conditions. And I would be interested to see how ASMR might affect medical conditions like autism and ADHD. And we kind of did see how it helped that one woman with autism, but I'd like to see um, scientists do more research on certain medical conditions and um, it'd be interesting to see if certain triggers affect the brain in a certain way with like different medical conditions like to see if there's specific triggers that will help certain like specific symptoms um, but I don't think that ASMR should be a replacement for medical attention for serious medical conditions and I think that like that can be dangerous if you have a really bad medical condition and you're just trying to treat it with ASMR. But I think that with the doctor's guidance, it could be beneficial for some people. Um, so to conclude, I think that ASMR is a such an interesting topic. 
I love how creators have turned something so simple into, and it's so random, and um, they've turned it into something that people enjoy so much. And I think it's great that people can find relief from their everyday chronic illnesses and depression and anxiety. And I hope that with more research, ASMR can become more scientifically and medically advanced. And here are all my sources. Anybody have any questions? John? Do you have a certain trigger that like makes um, you feel tingling more than like another one? I like 